Hey everybody, welcome to Workforce Gaming. I'm Brad, here with Doug. Hey. We both have wrapped up Resident Evil Village. No mm -hmm. 8, can't put the 8 in there. Um, <laughs> sure. So we just want to talk about it. I think we both kind of decided that this is much more interesting to talk about with spoilers and a lot of things that happen. Yeah. And I think doing just a general review, especially because of the way they showed this game off, where they really only did a really good job of only showing about the first two to three hours of this game. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So I think getting into a review of it instantly delves too much into spoilers. And so while we're thinking about it, it just makes more sense just to, we're just going to do like a spoiler cast and just talk all about the game instead of doing our normal, like hands off mm -hmm. review. So um, just fair warning, we're going to walk through the whole game, talk about everything that happens um, as well as our thoughts on it. So if you don't want spoilers, you haven't played it yet, go play it. I think there's a lot of stuff that are very easy spoilers towards the end of this game um, yeah. that could make a lot of things feel way different if you knew about them at the beginning. So, And we both really liked it. It's probably an important thing to say. <laughs> go yeah, go play both... that game. Go play yeah. this game. <laughs> exactly. And yeah. So anyway, to get into it without spoilers, I just need to start with this because it's the first thing I noticed. Like, yeah. the headphone audio in this is Sick. insane. It's like, so good. Yeah, yeah. There were scenes in this where I felt more, like, involved in what was going on playing this with headphones than Resident Evil 7 in VR. Sure, I can just see be that. Yeah, just yeah. because the way the 3D audio works, the way that you kind of, kind of constantly have this, like, something behind you, something over there, what direction was that? And the 3D audio works so well that you really do get this sense, um, especially in the, the dollhouse part where there's just stuff everywhere and where yeah. is this thing and what's going on? It's so good. Yeah, I actually, it was funny because um, I wasn't quite sure if the three D audio, like how how much um, how much it was impacting me necessarily, because I didn't have that in me, like oh, whoa, this is amazing. But I did I did realize like as I was playing, I was like, I need to put my headphones on to identify where enemies are, because it, it's like, is there a guy around me? Okay, he's maybe mm -hmm. a little bit off to my left, somewhere out there, kind of thing. Yeah, it was really cool. Like as I was like quick turning and that sort of thing, I was like, okay, there's a guy there, there's a guy there, there's a guy there. Um, but yeah, I think they do a lot of cool stuff with the audio as well. I think my, my, one of my favorite parts of the game is like the first time it gets spooky is, um, when, uh, so the game, so when the game starts, uh, you're the van, you get, you basically get kidnapped by Chris and then the van crashes and you're just yeah. out in the middle of the forest by yourself and you can hear like things running around like to the left and right of you and you turn your kit and you turn your flashlight and there's nothing there, but it sounds really close to you. Um, I really did like that 3D audio stuff, like in those in those sections particularly. I feel like they were like showing it off at some points. <laughs> and yeah, and that's what it felt like. It was like, okay, here here's what we're doing. Here's how you need to do this. And I think that it just it enhanced it so much. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right. So to actually get into the spoilers in the rest of this game, because we just had to yeah. get that out of the way, because it's just it's too good. Um, <laughs> uh, so I really felt like by the end of this that this game is every Resident Evil game that's ever been released. Yeah. rolled into one big package and i think if you've played most of them mm -hmm. um especially even just even if we just simplify it down to one through six if you just played the mainline games you can pick yeah. out where this part is heavily influenced by the original this part and frankly most of the game is heavily influenced by four this part sure. okay. ooh, this feels like six and i don't know if that's good or bad <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> there's a lot of sure. each one in here yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think um, the one thing I was a little bit worried about when I was, I, I, I agree with that. Like, I do like that it's very similar to RE4, but um, I really like that they fully embraced RE7 as well. It wasn't like a, oh, RE7 was a mistake. Let's ignore that stuff and let's do, like, let's just go back to the older stuff. Um, I really like that, like you said, it kind of brought in the whole history of Resident Evil, but it, I feel like, and correct me if I'm wrong, is this like the first direct sequel? Um, Resident Evil game storyline because I was surprised like how much like oh this is just straight up Resident Evil 7 2 um, it very much plus is. a bunch of cool Resident Evil stuff on top of it <laughs> I mean I'd have to go back and look specific but I mean sure. for the most part yeah I mean most of them you jump character perspectives in between and I mean obviously you're always focused somewhere around Chris Leon Jill all those other characters but yeah this one I think is the first one if I'm not mistaken I'm not great at Resident Evil history but um I think this is the first one you play back-to-back -back main characters so um, yeah, that is kind of cool. And again, I think I think coming out of seven and how um, just survival horror focus that was with the action mm -hmm. piece missing. Yeah, it was really interesting to say, OK, we're going to lean back into the action with this one. And you do have the, those those parts where the action's gone. The whole dollhouse is just you have no <laughs> yeah. weapons. Sure. There yeah, are yeah, no yeah. weapons yeah. like and you get that very Baker house feel there. But I think it, like you said, it's a good blend. It takes, mm -hmm. I think it takes enough from each game to kind of honor what that game tried to do yeah. and doesn't go like, a, oh, this is just a rehash of four. Oh, we're trying to do seven again. Or, yeah. ooh, we're really trying to get back to that classic, explore the thing. 
everything had the perfect amount of time mm-hmm. set for what it was doing. Yeah, and I think I think the thing that's kind of like interesting is like how they had set up, um, how they set the game up in like these sort of like five separate acts. Like they have the opening scene, which felt very Resident Evil Seven, and then they have the Castle Lady D stuff, which felt like very Resident Evil Two, and then the the you know the the house of I forgot the guys the the woman's name is the, um yep yeah and then then they have like the fishmonger area and then they have the uh, the the factory area and it felt like they were kind of exploring all those different facets of Resident Evil in those individual acts so like mm-hmm. you get your flavor in just these three hours you get your flavor here in just these three hours these flavor in this three hours this flavor in these three hours. <laughs> Your, um, your hours added up to a lot more than I played this game. <laughs> <laughs> I got 10. I did 10, but I did a lot you hit 10? of sides. To, uh, yeah, I got you 10 hours. Say, I'd say. My first yeah. playthrough was was 6, and then the, I'm doing hardcore now, and I'm almost done. I think I'm at like 4.5, 4. And a half, four. Mm-hmm. But anyway. Yeah. yeah. Did, you, did yeah. you feel, though, because it kept pulling from a different stuff that didn't have as... Um, maybe unique is not the right word, but didn't have such a strong voice as I guess is like Resident Evil 7. Like Resident Evil 7 to me, um, while it was like very solid one note, it's just a totally different note than any of the Resident Evil ones. And while I do like this one's kind of like a collection of cool Resident Evil stuff, I do feel that I kept thinking about rather Resident Evil games rather than thinking of it on its own merits. Does that make sense? I think so. Because I have the, kind of have the same thing going back through it, um, playing through it the second time, knowing the structure, knowing how it works, is it it, it feels very segmented. Because even when you go to the different parts, yeah. each one is keyed off, and it's like, oh, I got this key, I go to this part. I got this key, I go to that part. And I think that takes away from some of the um, cohesiveness of it, because yeah. everything's yeah. so segmented. Where it's like, okay, I did the castle. I can't go back to the castle. Yeah, yeah. I did the fish thing. I can't go back to the fish area, and. Yeah everything's so segmented there that it does it does give it more of a a just kind of a collection feel more so than a like cohesive thing but again i think that's that is something that happens in a lot of other ones because even in seven it's very clear you had like house boat mine sure and like house is really strong for the first 70 percent of that game and then you get to like the boat in my eye kind of like okay let's let's wrap this up here let's yeah yeah (laughs) That's fair, but I think I think the tonal change is the thing I noticed more. It's like because the to- and the thing I think it's like it's kind of like a double edged sword because one I think they kept the game very interesting throughout because I was like okay what's happening in this scene I have no idea like preconceived notions are out the window because I'm in a wholly new area, um, but I felt like the tone was weird. It kept like swapping with the tones, but I think it was fun because it felt so chaotic mm-hmm. in tone <laughs> um, that like it kept me like so interested throughout. And I think a lot of people are saying it's like oh the pacing in this game is really good. It's like I don't know if the pacing's really good or just like these huge swings back and forth of what kind of game it was um which i really enjoyed but i think i think it felt as a result didn't have such a strong let's put our foot in the ground of like what re7 did i'm saying it's like hey this is our story and this one it's more like this is this is resident evil which is kind of cool and i guess it's in its own way it's definitely a different way to approach it and i think um kind of having Ethan as that blank slate character coming into this, not blank slate. That's probably a yeah. little too rough, but <laughs> I love Ethan. Didn't have... I freaking love he... Ethan. <laughs> Did you love Ethan prior to playing this though? Yes. I, you know, okay. it's actually really, it's funny. And I, the one thing I kept thinking about Ethan before I got, cause I didn't know you got to play as Chris later on. I thought that was really cool. The thing I liked about Ethan is that not even it's, he's the only protagonist where I feel like he's not going to make it out alive. Um, True. Like if you play like Resident Evil 2 or play literally any other Resident Evil, they're like, commando-y kind of guys not commando but they're all very competent <laughs> folks yes that, like, or you, on you their way feel... to being a very competent folk <laughs> yeah exactly like even not so competent re2 leon is like still like he's he's like got body armor and stuff like that yeah but like in re8 and re7 like i don't quite believe ethan's ever gonna make it out alive and like when a villain and he set... didn't <laughs> yeah yeah which is like yeah exactly it's a great twist um but i just felt like when um when a villain said like ethan i didn't expect you to make it this far it's like i also believed ethan wouldn't make it this far because <laughs> he gets the shit kicked out of and then and then it's like all the other resident evil characters like that's why ethan is such a good horror game protagonist because he isn't super competent he's not it's like kind of like the silent hill sort of character he's just a normal yeah. guy well not anymore, eh, not anymore <laughs> yeah yeah but that's why i liked him so much he's just a normal ass dude I, I, and I, and I can see that. And again, I think that's where shifting tones works so much. I think if you put, like, yeah. you, you, you obviously play as Chris. I think you put Chris in that castle. And Chris is like, I've done this before. Fuck Exactly. This. Here's my assault rifle. I'm just going to start gunning everything down and hopefully we'll find a way out. Whereas yeah, yeah, Ethan's yeah. much more like, I don't know what the hell's going on. I don't know what to do. Like, there's vampire ladies and 
I gotta shoot windows. This is... Oh, shoot windows. Okay. Why are you sticking, like, giant hooks in my hands? Whereas... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it was just fun seeing him get the the, the crap kicked out. Like, I had such a big smile on my face anytime a cutscene would start because it's like he's just about to get the shit kicked out of him, and it's such a fun every time. I, I, my, I think my one of my favorite scenes in the game is the introduction of Lady D when you pull the lever and his hand oh, yeah, gets and she cut just off. Up and, just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and it just yeah. and it slides so nicely, just like it, it doesn't lose the grip on the lever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I think you have to like grab his. Yeah, yes, exactly. You have to go I'm back and like... get the hand reattach. Yeah. I and think this, that would never happen with another Resident Evil character. Well, and, and again, I think that's the, the 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 things they went through to change up Ethan. I think yeah. make some fun moments because the first time I think I I think I even texted you because I played this before Doug got a chance yeah. to. I think I texted you and was like, I need to know something about who <laughs> Ethan is because yeah. it's the scene where his hand's sitting there and he just dumps the medicine on it and just like click. <laughs> yeah, like wait <laughs> a minute, right back on. Yeah, yeah, there's something like I know he had some stuff going on after the end of seven, but uh. Yeah. This is a bit much. And it's just one of those things where just like my, I just laughed. And it was like, okay, this is what we're going for. Like, we're just going to have some fun. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, exactly. And I almost think, so I played through originally on normal, and then I'm trying to go through hardcore now. Yeah. I actually much prefer it on normal because it does mm -hmm. have kind of this that dumb action movie goofy feel sure. sometimes. Yeah. That like, you do this big stressful encounter in, on hardcore, and then that scene happens, you're like... I don't joke around about this shit. I just took 45 oh, minutes to funny. do that thing. Whereas that is just like, <laughs> yeah, that's right. That lady cut my hand off and then I ran away. <laughs> it's funny. I, it's funny. Cause I, I, cause I did play through on hardcore and the way I thought about it is that those scenes, those cutscenes and stuff were like a sense of levity. Cause like, because I, I actually, I, I disagree with your point for the same, for like this, the same point, because I was saying like, I liked this very intense sort of like, encounters which when i was playing on a hardcore it's like oh boy i need a time to rest and like have like kind of like a silly cut scene there's like a sort of silliness to it that i really mm -hmm. liked it, it actually you know what it kind of reminded me of is the way people describe like going through haunted houses like i hate haunted houses i think they Same. suck but yep. but people seem to find them fun because there's like they they see the humor in like the scares and i just yep. never did i just get scared but in this one i felt that sort of like humorous aspect it's kind of like these moments of levity it's like we're just gonna go so crazy and all that sort of thing it actually reminds me of like evil within but did it much better where it, yeah. it's like it's it's much more aware of how silly it can be um mm -hmm. and i think probably more aware than other resident evil games like in this one i think i think resident evil 4 it's pretty silly but i would say not always intentionally and this like one I felt like Resident Evil Resident Evil 4 is Metal Gear Solid silly where it's sure. like just yeah, yeah. oh <laughs> fun <laughs> okay I see what you did there okay moving on whereas this yeah. is like <laughs> he, he poured medicine and stuck his hand back on <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah exactly and it, and it, it, sell, it felt like way more intentional of like yes, the silliness it, and, the, and the points of levity and the grossness and, and that kind of thing um, more so than any other ones so I guess to kind of keep going here uh, looking at the setting, I think before we get into all this, the story stuff, the setting I think yeah. was really billed as like this return to Resident Evil stuff with the castle yeah. really feeling like the Spencer Mansion, the village really feeling like four. I have to say, like after the first like hour, I was just kind of like, okay, this is fine. I was not overly impressed with really? the setting. Yeah, I think. Oh, that's interesting. I, I think it was. I think part of it was just the like jumping around. I feel like I never really got to make that village like home. You know what I mean? Sure. We're like, because it was constantly just like, okay, run to this corner, open that gate, run to this corner, open that gate, run to this corner, open that gate. Oh, yeah, stop in these couple houses on the way. I just, yeah. I think I was, and I just replayed through four like a month ago just to kind of like, mm -hmm. for fun. Um, but I think playing through four, I feel like had much more of that cohesive feeling to it, whereas always the village. Yeah. And even when you get to the castle in four, like, it still kind of connects back to the village, whereas this, it felt all so separate that I feel like you never really got to explore that setting, especially for something that really was billing itself on the setting. Yeah, I, I feel, I, I agree with you. I agree with you. Be, at, I, th I think I felt very cohesive until, I'd say the third level, until the fishmonger stuff, because I felt like the late, like the castle, I felt was really integrated into the village, like, well, and the story was integrated really well. That's true. Yeah. Of like Lady D, like kidnapping women from the actually all. If you look at the concept, are all of the all of the creatures and like the dungeon are women because they're failed mm -hmm. daughters, sort of thing. Yep. And it was like there's that nice direct connection. And then I like that the the next section, the house of whatever, while it wasn't connected to the village, they made sure to tell you it's like, oh, she's a recluse, so it makes sense that she's not really connected to the village. 
But then when you get to like the factory and the sort yep. of fishmongery areas, it feels like you didn't really have that connection to the village. It, it kind of felt like different games, like tonally and, and that sort of thing. So I, I felt like that first half was like really strong and like making you feel for this village. Um, it feels like it kind of feels like maybe there's some stuff left in development because it's really weird. You have a cutscene with like ten different human characters and then you kill them all off and they're never seen again. And well, and like no other humans after that point. Yeah, yeah. Oh, because I think. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, because I think I think if you go back to our demo impressions, like that was one of the things that I think we were both kind of excited about. Yes. Like, oh, yeah. you're gonna be in this village. You're gonna see these people. Like, we're really building this hard on like the village aspect of this. Yeah. And after that initial half, first half hour, forty five minutes, there are no people. Like, you're just in yeah. an empty, deserted village, and the most you got are like notes left behind from everybody else, which is fine. But again, I think, I think both of us were kind of excited for this. Like, this is going to be like a cool exploring this village, meeting the people mm. in this village, like seeing what's going on, seeing how all of this stuff is coming about to these people. Because I feel like that first yeah. demo or second demo, technically, really lend itself to those ideas of like, what's going on? I'm going to get it from the people, not just from notes. Yeah, and I, and I felt like because some of the sub bosses, like the um uh. I don't know what you call them. Like they're super werewolves. I guess the best way to describe yeah, with them. Yeah, big hammers and axes and stuff. No, no, uh, no, no. The the ones that are on all fours. Oh yeah, the big yeah, like just the giant wolf. <laughs> the giant wolf, yeah, the giant wolf ones. I think they're insinuating that those are some of those people you met at the beginning. But if they had integrated that like a little bit better, of like you knew these people, and then like oh my god, now I have to kill them in their boss form. Bloodborne did that kind of actually, where like you met char- <laughs> where you met characters. This is so much Bloodborne stuff. I'm not getting into it. There's a ton of Bloodborne stuff, <laughs> but in Bloodborne you would meet a character and then later fight them as a boss once they've turned. And it's like, oh, it's mm-hmm. a, it's kind of a big moment. And here it felt like, like I think that was the intention, but it's just kind of missing. But this game already had a ton of characters anyway, like with those, you know, the four main generals, then Miranda, yeah. and then the three daughters and that sort of thing. And I felt like, okay, let's just kind of cut that out. It was weird kind of mm-hmm. going back to the village. And like you said, you didn't really have that connection with it um, because it just felt like a gameplay space at some point. Like yeah. It was neat opening gates and doors and, and that kind of thing. But yeah, I agree. It didn't really have that. Because there's no... You never felt the village getting better. <laughs> like, I thought like, oh, I'm protecting the village. Or it doesn't even feel like it's getting worse. It just always kind of feels like there's just more monsters there. So it doesn't really... It's... I think, it, yeah. Because I think you're right. It just it feels very much like a... Oh, yeah. Come back in a minute. Get that next key. Come back yeah. in a minute. Get that next key. And you never get the the warm, welcoming feeling. You never see... And I think your point of it never gets better, it never gets worse. It starts out as like as bad as it can be. Everybody's yeah, dead. Sure. And it's just exactly. like, well, I'm just walking through here to get from point A to point B and everybody's dead. So there's not really much development or anything happening here. It's just mm-hmm. space. <laughs> yeah, and that's like some of the tension of like we have to blow up the village and at the end. It's like yeah, that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm not there there's anyway. Like, I've been nothing. there. I looked in all those houses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's there's nobody here. It's an empty village full of monsters. Like, yeah, okay, of course, blow it up. It's not, and that I and I feel like they could kind of insinuate like this is a big thing that they're doing, and it's just like, yeah, yeah all right, whatever. Mm. I did like that. You didn't you didn't like the castle though? Like you didn't feel, you didn't like that setting sort of thing? Because I love the castle. I thought the castle was just drop dead gorgeous all the time. The guy, every, I mean, every, that's yeah. That's the thing is that like it is it is fantastic and it looks yeah. amazing, um, but again I don't think I don't think I ever had like that connection with the Baker House where I felt like I was kind of constantly sprawling through sure. different things. It was just like this is the roof of the castle, this is the main hall of the castle. You know what I mean? Whereas like the Baker House, it's like it feels lived in. It felt like everywhere you were going, there was That's different fair. things happening. There was different, um, not necessarily environments, but you could definitely tell like. We were trying to do something different with this area where it was just no, it's a big empty castle. The one, the one big yeah, lady and her three fair. daughters live there, and that's it. Also, there's a creepy dungeon. Yeah, and it's weird because the, the the stuff definitely says that it's lived in. Like there's people like working in the kitchens and that kind of thing too. Yeah. Like if you read the documents, like it's a it's a castle that's been running for a long mm-hmm. time, but you never really got that sense of it. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you. It just felt like an abandoned castle when it was supposed to not be an abandoned castle. I don't know, um, but yeah. Um, moving on to a couple other things. You kind of mentioned some of the optional bosses too. Yeah. They just kind of pop up like out of nowhere. Like you just (laughs) stumble into them. And sometimes like the best part is, is there was one, it was when I was going to the stronghold and you take a right or a left path. And I wasn't, I wasn't quite sure which way to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I went left and I went through there. I was like, this thing's hard as hell. And then I finally, like, it took me like a try or two and I finally kill this stupid thing and I go, 
I get like the treasure that's there. And I'm like, oh, oh, that wasn't where I was supposed to go. This was just an <laughs> optional area that I just literally yeah. like wasted all of my ammo on this weird optional part. Well, yeah, okay. <laughs> I I, know, I I love that. I know exactly what you're talking about because I think it's like the how the cannibal house or something like that. Yeah. Um, because it the thing is like um, and I this this not not just I think that's probably the biggest optional area, but all the treasure chests as well that they show yep. have similar similarly sized, maybe a little bit smaller optional areas as well. And it was cool, um, kind of coming upon them. I feel like that's the only one I came upon. I feel like the mm -hmm. other ones like I'm trying to get this treasure chest and maybe there's a boss there sort of thing. Um, but yep. it is funny when you're um especially on hardcore some like the the giant wolf bosses are like they're just you don't you you need to go in prepared and like one of those yep. guys just shows up you're like well i'm fucked okay i'm just gonna run <laughs> away maybe i'll come back in the future <laughs> i don't know i guess that's your part of the village now <laughs> yeah i'll leave you to it you have that angel yeah. statue that can be yours it's okay buddy yeah <laughs> And, but it was funny though, because like there's there's definitely points where I was like, okay, I am going to prepare for this fight now. I'm going to prepare for this optional boss. But boy, it does fe you feel it like when you're just sucking down ammo after ammo. I did feel like the game might be balanced around how much ammo you have left because a lot of boss battles ended just as I was almost out of ammo, <laughs> and I was like, this this seems suspicious. Like. Every time on my last on my last first aid kit, and all of a sudden my magnum bullet suddenly felt like it was like a cannon going off, sort of thing. <laughs> <laughs> but it, but it, I felt the tension. I, I enjoyed the tension of it. Um, yeah, yeah. I did like that. I did like the option. I was surprised how much optional stuff there was. I like cleaning up the village when I was going through. It's like oh, there's a lot of unique areas and unique things and unique puzzles. There's puzzles in there that showed me a mechanic I wasn't. Can you know you can set people on fire? Nope. Yeah, it's a major. Yeah, you can. I didn't know that, and then it became a major mechanic of this one puzzle. I was like, "Oh, that's really cool." <laughs> yeah, I didn't explore too much, but I do. I did do a little bit more than I feel like I typically would. I'm more of a like, yeah. let's just get the story going, because they put them on the map too. Like that. Sure. That made my that made my day when that map was like, here's some treasure stuff. And I, okay, I can actually get some of these. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was cool, and it, it felt like it, it was like just the right amount where it's like. I think I can get these. I think I can get all of these. In hardcore, mm -hmm. I just needed to. I was like, I need to get my guns upgraded. Like, I'm, I'm dying all the time. Like, I need to do it. That's why I like yeah. playing on hardcore, because I felt like I needed to actually do that. Like, I felt like I needed to make sure I got the health upgrades. I needed to make sure I got the getting run faster. I needed to make sure to do this. Um, so that's why I was like playing on hardcore, because I felt like I needed to use these mechanics more than they were optional sort of thing. Um, run and gun. <laughs> <laughs> I can understand why plenty you want to do that. Of, plenty of ammo, no stress. Let's just yeah. go have some fun. That's fun. Um, the Duke. Yeah. Kinda, to, before we get into like the major, like let's go bit, uh, bit by bit through this. Sure. The Duke. He is so weird. Like I love yeah. the way that he's completely integrated into the story without really having any stake in it. Yeah, he felt I was. Um... I, I don't remember Resident Evil 4, so I haven't played that in a long time. But I remember the merchant was this very – was, like, he had no impact on the story whatsoever at all. No. Like, he was just, like, somebody None. there kind of thing. Um, I, I like the Duke's dialogue here. I, I think – the I really like the Duke's dialogue. And I remember the one moment where I was like, oh, this Duke is, like – this is there's something very off about it. And I was um, – was it's really – it's near the end of the game. And the Duke is the one who actually saves you from getting mm -hmm. your heart ripped out by Miranda. And – um there's a conversation that you have between you and the Duke. And it was like literally one of my favorite parts of the game. And they acknowledge that it's weird that the Duke can like just show up in places. Yeah. Um, and he like, he asked the Duke, he's like, who are you? Like, what are you? And the Duke goes, I don't even know. Or something like that. He gives, a, he gives <laughs> yeah. an answer of like, he doesn't even know what his powers are or that. And I was like, Oh, that's, that's cool. Because you know, the RE4 merchant is just like, it's, He's not mysterious. He's just a moving store. That's all. That's all he was. He was just a moving yeah. store. And this one, it's like, no. There's actually he has some sort of place in this universe. Um, and I really, I really did like that. And his dialogue was like super cool all the time. It was very. He seemed like your friend. It wasn't super condescending, but it's just a condescending enough. <laughs> I did like it. It was that weird balance of are you helping me or are you just like yeah. here to like go <laughs> like you said before ethan then will make it out like oh because i think he even yeah. says that a couple times like oh i see you made it this far huh <laughs> <laughs> that's interesting and he kind of contributes to that like i'm just here to help you because you ain't doing it on your own yeah did you notice that did you notice that after every boss he's holding something from that boss i did so not. 
So if you beat, um, I guess the easiest one does the, 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 I think if you, the ones I definitely remember is after you beat the house with the dolls, the next time you beat him, he's actually holding one of the dolls and like playing with it. And then after you beat the fishmonger, he has the jar of like whatever the, they have a name for it. The fungus the thing. parasite thing. Yeah. Yeah. And he's like, he's holding it, like looking at it. He's like, ah, fine specimen sort of thing. So I'm not sure if he's like looting the houses once you kill these people. Um, but I just, <laughs> I like that. I like the little like kind of things they do with the Duke. Did you, I like them. I liked them a lot. Do you like them or? Yeah. No. I, and I think that's why playing Resident Evil 4 and again, so much of this being compared to that going like, oh, they're doing the merchant again from Resident Evil 4. Sure. And I hadn't played Resident Evil 4 since whenever it came back out, you know, 15 years ago or whatever. And I went in going like, oh yeah, everybody's talking about how like the Duke's like this merchant. And then I went back and I was like, oh yeah, he's just kind of like, has a couple cool lines and is just a cool character model. Yeah. I, are, are we really that excited we're doing this again? And then you get, <laughs> sure. to, the, and yeah. then you get to the Duke and you're like, oh, okay, I think this was the intention for what people, that those kind of nostalgia goggles of like, you're like, oh man, yeah. like I remember this being really cool. And it's like, this the duke is what i remember the merchant being where like every yes, time you got yeah, to him yeah. he had some like cool line to say to you he had something going on and it just it fits so perfectly and every time you go there you're like okay like what's he gonna say what's gonna happen what's because he kind of even points you in directions and i think that's a cool way to kind of have yes. that merchant play into this where it's like okay this weird character i don't understand is also kind of leading me through this is this good mm -hmm. or bad what intention does he have and i think that kind of mysterious nature of him when everybody else is so clearly very evil. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Play, oh, sure. Plays really point. well. Yeah. I, and I was, I was like, I was, it's, it's interesting because other characters don't mention the Duke and I, I'm, I'm hope they play more with the Duke in the future. Like I really, I hope they bring that character back, um, in interesting ways. Um, yeah. Like how they maybe integrate him a little bit further. Uh, it's, it's, yeah. I, I did you, I love you like the, um, how, speaking of the Duke, I really like the, uh, the treasure stuff. I love the treasure stuff. Like that felt so good all the time. Like just getting treasures and selling stuff. Did you, did you ever, did you end up getting on your second playthrough to do the combinations of things and like collecting? Yeah, I did. I didn't I... realize. Yeah. I didn't realize that was an option the first time through. Cause I literally was just like, I mean, yeah, I could use more guns. Sell, 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 yeah. sell, 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 sell. Okay. Done. Oh, I okay. Sure. I tabbed over that. I don't even know if I tabbed over that page in the inventory. My first playthrough. So it's like, <laughs> oh yeah, it's, it's all in the bag somewhere. Don't worry about it. Either you either give me that or you give me money. That's whatever. You know what I mean? It's either way. I'm sure. getting to the Duke and I'm getting that much money, and that's all that's happening with it. Oh, okay, sure. Because I the thing I I I really enjoyed it. I found it like really memorable because um I maybe at least on hardcore because those those all that stuff like th that mattered so much. Like I really needed the extra firepower all the time. Yeah. So like when I just like cash in on just like some combined thing that I've been waiting like three hours to combine and like get, finally sell to the Duke <laughs> and like, boom, power, power, power. I just, I really, really love that mechanic of, of buying and selling stuff and, and that kind of thing. And I think that's one of the things where, because I did new game plus for hardcore, it's like, nah, I'm good. Sure. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> I'm just gonna, just gonna blow through these first like two or three hours until I get to the further stuff. But Fair. Yeah. Um, so we've talked a little bit about parts of this, but I guess to kind yeah. of really dig into story stuff and plot heavy stuff. Yeah. Um, this, like you mentioned, very, very clearly a sequel to Resident Evil 7. There's, this yeah. is Resident Evil 7 Part 2. There's no other way to describe this. This is not... It feels very weird that you would play this as a standalone experience. Yeah. Yeah, they, they die. Like yeah. They jump they jump into it pretty good. And I I did watch because I was like, okay, you know, I played Resident Evil 7 a month or two ago. But what are the, like, what are the important things you want me to know? So I played yeah. that little quick prologue video at the end that's literally just like two minutes of Ethan like, oh, yeah, I was in Louisiana. There are some crazy people. Here's my oh. wife. Now we're in Eastern Europe. All right, let's go. Oh, is that it? I didn't. I didn't watch it. I didn't watch it because I just played Resident Evil Seven like fairly it's, recently. It's so I didn't really... legitimately like a minute long of like the most basic information you can come up with <laughs> about Resident Evil Seven. Like bad house, yeah. bad family, creepy mold, weird wife girlfriend thing at the time. Yeah, Not yeah. quite sure. And that That's was literally funny. like the entire thing. So, um. I do like how this ended up ultimately tying into Resident Evil, other Resident Evils. You've got obviously mm -hmm. Chris um as kind of the bad guy that yeah, weird kind of eh. they, they pretend he is they pretend he is um but he does treat ethan like shit which is always fine <laughs> <laughs> um i that is one of the things we're playing through the second time that first opening scene where he comes in and just shoots mia so many times is like just shut up and stay here ethan <laughs> and you're like i you know what's going on you know that like I'm, you know, there's something weird with me. You know that, like, you're stealing my daughter. We're not going to take the two minutes you could to, like, real quick go, hey, here's what's up. Yeah. 
the, 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 a character mentions that to Chris, like, really, really farther on. I think I, it's, it's, like, the first time Ethan dies, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, he, like, one of his compatriots is like, you should have told Ethan the plan. Yeah. Yeah, and I was like, yeah, actually, I feel like Resident Evil 8 wouldn't happen if Chris explained what happened. <laughs> like, if, if Chris <laughs> and explains and, what's going on. <laughs> and that's the thing. It's, like, that opening scene, like, and, yep, here's the deal. Creepy, like, lady gonna take your daughter thinks it's her daughter gonna try and reincarnate her daughter want to help want to sit on the bench don't care gonna go get him let me know like (laughs) (laughs) yeah 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 it's funny and then like you meet chris later on too and he's like you're out of your element ethan like you don't know what you're talking about it's like could have explained it there as well god there's there's plenty of times where you could have explained i i ran into you like three times before you give me the big ass tank and i'm like go get him (laughs) that was so funny and ridiculous yeah, no, I I, um, I did I like I like their interactions a lot though. <laughs> so like dumb dumb lore thing that I really like is there's yeah. one note in this that towards the end basically explains how seven and eight are really like super connected to everything else in the yeah. Resident Evil universe through this one like four page note where it's like because you kind of play through seven and you're like okay this outside of the weird umbrella logo and Chris showing up at the end like this could have been yeah. anything. Sure. There's 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 a couple references to Raccoon City and notes, and there's a couple references to Umbrella here and there, but like for the most part, this could have been anything. And then this note's like, oh yeah, no, like uh, yeah, Spencer, he him and Randall were friends. She showed him the mold, and then she was like, yeah. hey, look at this cool design that's on all these walls. It looks like an umbrella. And he's like, cool. I started a company named Umbrella. <laughs> yeah. The the uh, I. There's a little, yeah, I'm, I'm happy you're happy. I just, I'm not steeped in Resident Evil lore, like, at all. I've realized I've played a lot of Resident Evil, but I was like, BSAA, I know that's important, but I don't remember <laughs> why. why. Are they good guys? <laughs> Are they bad guys? They seem bad now, but were they the good guys? What does that have to do yeah. with stars? There's too many no, acronyms. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of acronyms flying around near the end. Yeah, no, that, I mean, it was it was cool. I did like that. I did like that. That sort of like this is the original sort of bio weapon center yeah. kind of thing. Uh, that that was that was really cool. Um, and I did like the reveal of that big. Oh, the the one thing I was surprised was um, like kind of talking about more because I'm more attuned to the Resident Evil Seven stuff. It's like they mentioned the Baker stuff like a lot. And I was yeah. just like, I, well, the first time they said Baker, I was like, oh, we're, we're talking about this. We're, st- this is a big thing. This is still like a, a, a moment that was important. And like the Evelyn stuff is like, oh, actually this is incredibly, incredibly, incredibly important to mm-hmm. the stuff with Eve. Um, I, th- we didn't talk about this. Separating the baby was real strange, right? Like what happened? <laughs> yeah. I still don't quite exactly what the deal with Rose was. Like it's, Did they... I feel like it, she's she's really powerful, so we can pull her apart, but she's still together. But like <laughs> then she's together at the end, and like that one of those last scenes. I, I think I had the first time where I like the first where you go talk to the duke. He's like, "Did you look at the jar?" And it just I says, could not believe Head. that shit. And I think I just went, "Wait a minute!" So my daughter's dead. I can go home now, right? And it's like, "No, don't worry. There's four other ones that have the other parts, and we'll just like." <laughs> yeah pop her back together and then it didn't make sense that she was separated at all it's like i for a game that's like pretty silly like throwing baby butchering in is like just casually is like whoa it was just... <laughs> i was like holy shit <laughs> and and again to your point like it's one of those things where it's like i was expecting some big payoff of like oh like yeah. i don't even know i'm not like some crazy horror game writer but like oh we have all these things and this we had to do this to reincarnate her daughter and like you had to have the part and it's just like nah we just did it yeah <laughs> that's it she just, just like, it happened yeah and she, then they reformed her back into normal rose and i was like okay all right it was just, it was very weird but i just thought like the whole the whole the whole thing that basically the whole thing like resident evil 8 was like ethan's trying to get his daughter back and it's like <laughs> it's just like yeah we cut up his daughter and then like separated like four different areas like that's it was so fucked up <laughs> to like when i saw that i was like this seems like very totally like crazy but i guess that's it's i at the very least the funny excuse to have to have four levels <laughs> it, is, um, it is one of the funnier like yeah. go get the things to make the thing that i think i've ever seen because it's just like yeah. what really like i gotta get the arm yeah. I'm getting now. Like, okay. Yeah. Weird. I, I, I guess I have a quick question from like from Resident Evil lore standpoint. The BSAA, they were the guys fighting Umbrella, right? Like Chris used to work for them, correct? They're, I believe so. Yes. So, I'm, yeah. I'm not great at Resident Evil oh, lore, okay, okay. but yes, I believe so. <laughs> okay. 
it was weird I get, that the bio anti bio weapons are using bio weapons at the end. That was like the big. That I, I do know that was like the big reveal. I'm really good at like one through three lore, sure. <laughs> and then okay, like fair. four, five, and six are just like this big mess, and I don't know where Revelations fits in there, and it's just yeah, like yeah. okay. I, yeah. Once you get past the basics, I'm gone. I couldn't tell you how this all connects back to Africa and Resident Evil Five and yeah, what I, all that other stuff. But anyway, because <laughs> I mean, because to me, I, I I didn't like because I liked how much of a sequel it was to RE Seven. I didn't like that it felt that when they brought in all that like here's the connectedness, the other stuff. I felt like they were kind of like closing the book on Mia, Ethan, and Rose. Kind of, I understand. We'll talk about it in a second. <laughs> but like, I did. I I kind of liked Ethan as a character. I kind of liked Mia being around. I didn't, and I didn't like that. It's like okay, now it's back to the BSAA stuff. And I was like, okay, I, sure. But I, I I I don't know. I didn't find that as interesting. I I didn't like that it was going back to like okay, we're going back to the Resident Evil stuff. It's like oh, okay, sure. But I kind of like this stuff to be honest. <laughs> it it definitely feels like almost tossed in at the end because i think yeah. i think the chris stuff is justified with the ending of seven but sure. i do think once yeah, you start yeah, throwing fair. bsaa stuff back in there i think a lot of that almost comes from the like ooh, people have now played two and three mm-hmm. we can toss some more of this in here and we're gonna remake four and ooh, we yeah, can yeah. uh we can start throwing this stuff in here so i think i think a lot of it comes from that success and i'd be curious to know if like two and three had flopped on the remakes, would they have, if they would they have tried to like wiggle all that in at the end because i mean like there is legitimately like just a, the bsa here also they're using bio weapons you're like yeah, oh I, man I, here's this here's the sequel but then the post credit teases 20 years in the future so like can we just jump to the post game stuff now i feel like we're talking about enough stuff i fine. hate the post credits thing i hate the post credits thing i think it's very well, I, why because because you spend the previous 20 minutes up to that trying to go like oh yeah like bsa is coming like chris is now like in charge yeah. we got all this figured out we got all this stuff. 20 years later so like are these things still an issue in 20 years like yeah it's one of those time jumps where like at first it didn't hit me it's like oh cool like oh yeah we're going to like back to ethan's grave and then like it's like oh no this is rose you're like but wait like if she's like 20 yeah that means that this the next Resident Evil will be set in 2040-ish. Sure. Which puts, like, anyone other than Rose as, like, 60-plus. So you're going to have, like, Leon and his walker chasing down, like, who knows what. Like, but, it's but, just... Yeah. I'm totally okay no, with that, though. Like, I'm okay to abandon those characters, but I don't have as much connection to them. <laughs> but... I guess my thought was, if you're going to abandon those characters, give them more of a send-off. You know what I mean? Like, if we're just going to sure, pump Resident Evil to be now, saying. Resident Evil is futuristic, and it's like, oh, well, the last we really saw those characters was six. And then we saw yeah. Chris being kind of an asshole. I, and I, now we're just 20 years in the future. And again, Resident Evil is so weird with timeline stuff that I'm sure you'll see yeah. 150,000 things in between all this stuff. Yeah. But it just very much felt like you're like, okay, we're going to push all this down the road. And it's one of those things where at the same time, it's like, okay, we are 42-ish years. Raccoon City was 1998. We are like 42-ish years since like the Raccoon City incident. And we're still dealing with Umbrella and all these same problems. Like at some point, like, I I think what it is, I think, I think what it is is to get a clean slate um, because I think RE7. Okay. So when RE7 came out. I really, I mean, I really enjoyed it. But a lot of people like, Hey, where's Leon? Where's Chris? Where's Jill? It's like, they should all be around. They should, yeah, they should all be around here. Like, they they're, they should be involved in this in some way. And they kind of throw Chris at the end sort of thing. Um, but I think with this, it gives them a cleaner slate to answer that question. It's like, they're just old now. So it's, we can just please let us, like, abandon these characters. And this is the thing I was getting back to, of like, why I like Ethan. Um, and this kind of goes along with the Chris stuff. It's like, Ethan is so incompetent that it helps in the horror game aspect while Chris is just like, he's a super soldier sort of thing. Like, you just need a new cast because you just can't have, like, I, I thought that scene with Chris was like really cool showing how powerful Chris was and like how yeah. cool and awesome he was. You can't have that character be your main character in another Resident Evil game, in a horror game. Fair. Because he's too Fair. competent. So you just need, we need a new clean cast and we need people to stop asking us to keep bringing people back. <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs> so we kill them all. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of. In it's, the most yeah. boring way possible. Yeah, and, and I and I think they realize like I, I also think too with like six like it just kind of got out of hand and maybe they actually did give the send off to those characters there just nobody really liked those games I don't I don't know that I think could, they, I think they just got yet. too messy <laughs> and there was like that could be true yeah 
the other, the other thought that did pop into my brain too after I like started complaining about this and keeps popping back in my brain like that'd be stupid is um Evelyn and Seven had that weird like ages fast thing so I was like oh what if this is really only two years in the future but oh it's just ages. funny that's kind of popped in my head a couple times too but then it's like okay like but that gets back into your problem of like we're playing Resident Evil Nine as like super overly powered crazy bio weapon girl yeah I. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's that's totally fair. That's why. That's why I don't know what they're gonna do with that character. Um, uh, the only thing I didn't like about the post credit scene is like that guard was like such a needless dick to her <laughs> for some reason. And I <laughs> He's kept... like, "Hey, Evelyn, remember that that one superpower girl who killed your whole family? Essentially, it's like, what? what? What's going Let's on? Let's bring that up. I, <laughs> yeah. My my issue with that dude is like because he's the only other one there. You're like, he has to be someone important. Yeah, like, it's, I, they're gonna yeah. like toss to him. They're gonna be like, oh, shut up. Wesker, I thought, <laughs> like, I thought, I, oh, yeah. do Wes- or like, or James Redfield or something. something like, like oh, that. Yeah, this yeah. must be Chris's kid. Okay, like Ethan and Chris's kids were coming together. That's yeah. where we're going next. They're gonna work together. And it's just like, no, nope, he's just a dick who's here, and he's just like whatever. Like, I'm just yeah. driving, and she's just like, I'm more powerful than you know. I was like, whatever. You ready to go home? <laughs> yeah, it was it was a weird scene. It did feel like they crammed it, like it felt like they just kind of like crammed it a bunch of Resident Evil stuff right at the end. And I I, I think yeah. that's part of it too. I was like, eh, okay, I think they'll probably figure out who that guard guy was um, eventually at some point. <laughs> <laughs> go uh, back and yeah, throw some throw some information there. Um, that kind of sums up everything. We didn't necessarily go line by line through the story. Yeah. I don't think. Um, I, I, what's you your favorite? Can, can we? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Keep going. I was going to say, the only thing that I want to say that, like, really stood out to me that I think, like, has kind of gotten overlooked because of all the weird stuff around Lady D yeah. is Heisenberg is, like, the coolest character in this game. Like, He's Nicolas I Cage. Love Heis- He's like Nicolas Cage Magneto. <laughs> yeah, <that's> true. <laughs> <laughs> He's so great. And I love the just, like, weird crap that plays. It's yeah. the one part of the factory I really like where they just, he's just, like, weirdly, like, antagonizing you the whole way through. Yeah. That opening scene where he's just, like, shit down. And then, like, the <laughs> propeller dude's, like, sitting down screaming there. And he's just, like, screaming at the propeller dude. It's so good. And then you get to the end with him and you do the big thing where he just turns into like some kind of crazy robot Mecha monster Heisenberg, transformer yeah. thing. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, the whole thing is just so good. And he is without question my favorite character in this. And I feel like they hit him a little bit from the marketing yeah. for, for good reason. He's towards the end of the game. Like you don't want to necessarily throw all of your cards on the table with a character like him, but he's so cool and is by yeah. far my favorite character in this game. I think I think the one thing we yeah we we didn't talk about too much at all is just the characters in this game are all like so, they're they're all so cool in their own unique way like Lady D and her her daughter so I like I really liked her a lot I thought she was like she was pretty cool in how she acted towards Ethan everybody hates Ethan which is really fun yeah <laughs> um, Heisenberg yeah I totally agree I did like um, I liked that he hated Miranda which was fun yes. Every, and it seemed like everybody hated Miranda in their own way. Like Lady D didn't like her. Because, and I like that Heisenberg and Lady D didn't like each other. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, it felt like the there was sibling like sibling rivalry almost. Yeah, yeah. It felt like there was like history to these characters. Um, I'm trying to think of like of the four I really liked. I really liked the fishmonger guy because I think the fishmonger guy is like kind of a dork, kind of like a dorky <laughs> loser. And he yep. is, and like I just thought at some point he's like, actually, you will see my true power. But even when you see his true power, he's still kind of like a weird dork. <laughs> um, he, he never evolves past just like creepy, gooey monster. Yeah, yeah. And it, was, it was fun, like having a creepy, gooey monster. And I really liked, I liked that the, we didn't, we didn't talk about it too much, but like the, the pieces of like Rose that you pick up, you get that one like immediately from him. You just like steal it from him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's walking like, I'm a- and had Ethan not had to say him stupid one liner at him, you could have just yeah. grabbed it and walked away. And he's like, grabbed, he's like, <laughs> stupid ass. <laughs> like, <laughs> Wait a minute, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah. Don't do this to me. And then, and then Ethan's like talking too much, and then he gets trapped because he was talking too much. Like, it, yeah. I just like how incom. Like, I think a lot of people are like Ethan's so incompetent. I was like, yeah, that's why he's so much fun to play as, and that's why he gets all <laughs> these silly, stupid situations because of mm-hmm. that. Um, I guess, I guess, uh, what was your favorite part? Because I, I have I have a very distinct favorite part of this game. Um, I think I really like the opening. I think it sets the tone really well. I love the way the lichens are kind of slowly introduced to the town. I think that works really, really mm-hmm. well. Um, and then I, again, maybe it's like the, like, I like the actually stupid Resident Evil, but the Chris part is just too good. <laughs> oh, Chris sure. Yeah. Just, <laughs> just, I think, I think after having like so many hours of like, kind of like, being careful about ammo and like making sure like I've got this and like kind of approaching situations a little slowly. It's like, 
nope, I got 600 bullets, a big old gun, and let's do <laughs> sure. this. And it just, it was such a weird thing to put in the middle of this game that yeah. I loved it, and I had a smile on my face all the time I was playing that part. It's really cathartic on hardcore, too, because um, I don't know what they did with the difficulty or something, but it's extremely easy. So it's just like, Bleh! it's like the only that's, time in that game. <laughs> that's the same thing on normal. Like, it's a step below, and I don't know if it's, I, I purposely bought Chris's guns for the second run through just to see if they were as overpowered, which they're not quite as much. But sure, because that was the same thing where it's just like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even caring what I am. I don't care. It's just this is done like easy. Yeah, like some of your biggest guy and just like mowing him down. That yeah, that was yep. really fun. Um, I, I uh, Which part? yeah, yeah, th yeah. That was that was really cool. I think I think my favorite part, and I I don't want to get too much into it, is um going is the walk up to house, uh, Beneviento. I I didn't like the part that people were like, oh, that's super scary part. The part in the basement, I was like, I thought it was fine. Um, but I really really love the walk up because you've done so much crazy shit at this point in the game, and then it's just this really quiet walk up. And I was like, I don't know what this game is anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Did you read the concept art for the house? Uh, that like their original intention with the waterfall and that sort of thing. Or yeah, there was what, like she been like tossing. Yeah, the, you know that there was. I can't remember the exact thing, but it was like something like, oh yeah, she was just like hanging people off the waterfall, just tossing dead bodies over into the waterfall. Like yeah, 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 it, yeah. And like just seeing that, and it's like a really, it's a really striking image too. Of like when you actually come to the house, you see that giant waterfall, and you see like this like empty mm -hmm. house sort of thing. Um, I just remember the, when I, like the, the, my, my favorite, favorite, my absolute favorite part is you put the, <laughs> you have to give your memories. So you put the envelope, the, uh, the photo, the, the photo. Yep. Yeah. And then you open the door and I was like, okay, what sort of crazy shit is this house going to be? And it's a very normal looking house. And that scared the absolute shit out of me. I was like, <laughs> what's going to happen? What's <laughs> going to happen? And they just, they let it pause. Like the action just complete dead pauses. I think for like maybe an hour of the lead up to the house and then getting to the basement. But just that like walking around the house, knowing that there's some sort of evil doll aspect to this, but not knowing how it's going to show up was just so yeah. intense. And that was, it was my favorite part of the, my entire favorite part of the game where nothing happened. And just walking around the house for the first time going, okay, what's, what's going to happen? Okay. Where's the what's corner right? that's going to turn where shit's going to happen. And like, they don't, they hold that, they hold that for so long. Um, it's, it's just so good. <laughs> well, because I mean, even because you, even when you get to the basement, you kind of like realize there's some shit going on. It's still like, okay, yeah. do these couple little puzzle things. Like, yeah, there, there is so much tension there that it just feels so good. And like, even like you don't really even relieve it because you're just playing a game of hide and seek to end that thing. Like that's really all you're doing at the end yeah. is just playing a quick game of hide and seek. Like there's, there's just this constant, like just state of like something more is going to happen something more is going to happen something more is going to happen and they just hold it and not, and it doesn't like nothing yeah. really does happen and it's yeah. it is really well done i think that house um i think just real will really stand out as one of the moments in this game that people will remember and we'll talk about for a long time yeah 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 it was just it was just very cool yeah anyway that is a lot of resident evil 8 um, that is <laughs> sorry resident evil village um really good game i really 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 enjoyed my time with yeah. it it's very rare that a week later after I finished the game, I'm like, no, nah, I'm going to go back and play through that again. And I'm yeah. almost done with my second playthrough and it's, it's still good and great game. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. But we are workforce gaming. You can follow us on Twitter at workforce gaming or subscribe to us wherever you're listening and we will see you later. Bye.